Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the first edition of Inside Artesian Football for the 2013 football season. Everyone, I'm Eric Meyer, joined as always by the head football coach, Fred Cutteriff. And coach, we appreciate you taking time to join us this season once again. Thanks for having me. It's uh, already going to be uh, set my seventh football season, so looking forward to it. A lot of things to look forward here to on the show this on the first edition for the Inside Artesian Football on WREP 15 Sports. The football season kicks off on Friday night. The Artesians will kick off as well as they play host to Garing Catholic. We'll preview that game with the coach and the Eagles coming up. We'll also take a look back to the Artesians' first action against somebody in a different color jersey that came on Friday night against Columbus East. We'll take a look at the highlights from that. And we'll also just generally take a look at how the preseason has gone for the Martinsville Artesians as they get ready for this football year. Up first, we'll take a break and come back and take a look at the 2013 version of the Martinsville Artesians. We'll do that when we return inside Artesian Football. Telemagine is your local headquarters for all types of computer and network services, including desktop and laptop repair, virus removal, and for business customers, design and installation of servers and networks. Give us a call or stop by and see us on North Indiana Street in Mooresville. Prescription drug abuse happens everywhere, even in our schools, and the results can be devastating. My friends wanted nothing to do with me. I went to the emergency room and almost died. I, I thought, thought it, it won't happen, happen to me. me. Anyone can abuse drugs. Don't let it be your friend. Don't let it be your classmate. Your cousin. Your sister. Your brother. Your teammate. Don't let it be your child. Don't let it be you. Back inside Artesian football with the head football coach, Fred Cutriff. And coach, before we get into any discussion about your team this year, let's take a look at a little bit of some changes that the IHSAA has put into this football season. The big one, obviously, they split the 5A class from one with 64 teams now to a 6A and a 5A with 32 teams each. And so there'll be some changes. You'll see some different people as you uh, head towards tournament time. Uh, I think it, uh, it's going to be very exciting. We're going to be playing schools more our size. Uh, you know, everyone, uh, you know, it beats going to play a, a Warren or a Carmel. You know, Center Grove was a, was a class act, a powerful team last year. But we're still going to be in a very tough sectional. We're playing against teams like Bloomington South, who has uh, won a few state championships themselves. And uh, you put those, you know, we got Bloomington North and Bedford in our sectional. So it's still going to be very tough sectionals, but it's, it's teams we can compete with, uh, you know, win. And uh, so it's just a matter of uh, showing up and playing. It's an upper, uh, with the upper two classes in 5 and 6A with 32 teams each. You mentioned the four teams now, including yourselves, that will be into that sectional. So the sectional is a little bit shorter. It's not eight teams. It's now four teams, one less week. The tournament, one less week for you guys as well. That bye game comes before the state championship game, should you get it. But some changes uh, as well. You also have Cathedral now staring yourselves potentially in the face also there in Class 5A. But good changes as you look for it for you guys now to be playing against schools that are more your size rather than three and four times our size. Well, I think it's the you know, football is such a different sport than any other one. I mean, it's the you run into a school of three thousand, four thousand against a school of fifteen hundred. There's an, there's numbers issues, and uh, especially with all the talk about concussions and injuries, and uh, it, it's it's tough. This is more makes it equal playing field. Uh, I'm not I'm not satisfied that cathedrals in there. I mean, cathedrals, you know, that's uh, the, still I think the Catholic schools are are a whole different uh, issue. Uh, that I'm not sure has been addressed by the way it needs to be, even though we play a couple Catholic schools. It's good for our program. But I think it's going to be good for Indiana uh, high school football. It's going to be make the state championship weekend. Uh, now it's having five games. You're going to have six. Uh, more money. They're down there anyhow renting it. Uh, so uh, I think it's going to be good. Anytime you give kids more opportunities to win championships, it, it's going to be a good thing. Let's take a look at your football team this year. Uh, practice started. You're two weeks into it now getting ready as you're uh, preparing for your first week would be the third week of uh, practice and a little bit unusual it's cool weather time for you guys when you first started out you haven't had a lot of hot days it's been mm -hmm. a little bit hotter this week but how has the practice gone uh, since the get-go when you started a couple weeks ago 
Uh, we've had we've had a pretty good couple of weeks. I mean, it's it's cool out there now. The last three days, the right. weather did, and now it's up to the mid 80s, and you can tell the difference. You know that that turf gets hot, but that's that's one of the the you know the the benefits still outweigh uh, the the turf being hot. So that being said, uh, we'll uh, we'll have to adjust, and it's supposed to be maybe hot this Friday night. But uh, uh, you just got to hydrate and take care take care of yourself, not stay away from the cokes, things like that. But uh, for the most part, we've, we've stayed pretty healthy. Don't want to jinx us. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of depth in some areas, and we're not so much depth in other areas. So, so we got some. We're counting on some young kids to step up, and they got to learn their assignments. But uh, the older guys have been doing a pretty good job leading us, and uh, we'll uh, we'll find out where we actually are here Friday night. The practice schedule as well, it kind of got pushed back a little bit, Thanksgiving being farther back, so you start mm -hmm. a little bit later. A lot of schools were already in session, two days were out. How did you guys have to adjust some of your schedule with the way that being moved back, start of school and such, for the beginning of practice? There's a few things we don't have in yet, but you know we'll have in the, the things we need to make sure that we get everything covered, but uh, you, you, you lose, really you're losing five practices from the standpoint of the two-a-days. But with the things we do in the summer, going to team camp and you know practicing on Monday nights and the things you're allowed to do, you're not as you're not as far off as 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 you were say 20 years ago when you couldn't get that. Uh, and the teams that didn't get any two a days, a lot of them just had team camp. We couldn't have contact, but they'd do a team camp the week before the actual dead week started, and uh, so they got they got their they got all that practice time in. And really, there's no rules on that except no contact. So. I'm sure the coach, teams won't be behind at all, I don't think. Let's look at this year's ball club. And when you start talking about this year's team, I think you squarely got to look at the offense with the kids that are coming back, the skilled position players. That obviously starts with your son, Mason Cutriff, the starting quarterback. He's got a lot of weapons around him as well, though. Well, he's uh, Mason's kind of the, you know, I think he kind of sums it up best. He, you know, he doesn't have to do it all. Uh, he's, he does a good job of running offense. He just kind of has to orchestrate things and get the ball to the right people. Uh, we put a lot of pressure on our quarterback to make those decisions and be a leader. And uh, you do, when you start talking about who he's, who he's got around him, uh, we're gonna have to start with Zach Miranda in the, in the backfield, uh, not very big, but uh, I think he's gonna do a good job for us being backed up by Troy Gorham. Uh, we got two guys basically returning. Dallas Forler uh, was a wing back who will be one of our, 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 our top guys we'll go to. And then Noah Davis, who will be on the be a whiteout? So those two guys have come back with experience, very explosive, and then you know a couple guys that uh, you know, people don't hear a lot about, but one being Trey Eaton uh, is is been a nice job for us this this year already. So he's got a nice set of hands, and he's lost some weight and looks like he's in pretty good shape. So he's catching it well, and he'll be backed up. By, those those guys will be backed up by Nolan Lavender and Josh Larue, and then the guy that started last year as a sophomore is John Zalotti, who seems to be much more explosive. Year older, a little, a little more mature. So, you know, he's you know he's one of the fastest guys we've got. So we've got some very fast kids. Um, uh, we got risk and we protect them. Our, we've right. got three linemen returning. We've got Sam Kleesner, Ethan Phillips, and Jared Knox. Uh, all of you know, two-year starters at least. And and uh, Ethan started. He'll be he'll be the lone junior there. And then we're going to move in a couple new guys. Spencer Anderson will be our center, not a very big guy. You'll relate to him. Yeah. Uh, but he's he's doesn't matter how big he is, how much heart he's got a lot of heart. And then uh, looks like uh, at, at the tackle we've had a couple different guys, but uh, for the most part I think we're going to go. We got to Blake Dabala and uh, is is a guy that's going to step in uh, and help us out there. But uh, uh, we can kind of wide open on, on some of those spots. But I think that's. Uh, 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 that's where we had the most question marks in the depth. Uh, with Sam Kleesner returning, you know, that's uh, we'll have to kind of see how he does. Uh, uh, we're looking at losing him both ways. We a couple guys on defense uh, have to fill. Uh, they didn't come out for us, so some of those guys are filling in. So I don't think we're missing a beat. We just got to keep them fresh and know when to sub them. Defensively, you looked at the offense. You got a lot of kids back. Defensively, lost a lot off of last year's team. Got some kids back as well. What are you expecting out of the defense this season? Well, we uh, we're probably going to change it up a little bit, and we're not as big as we've been. Not that we've ever been huge, but we're going to probably you know, a little more of an, an odd front and get us moving up there, and uh, you know, try not to. We really had some problems on at Columbus East, not knowing where to go. 
And uh, as the coaches, we kind of take the blame for that. But the guys have to learn where they're going, have to learn their assignments. It's got to be important to them. Uh, so, uh, but you know, we got uh, Bo Trimble, a returning linebacker, and uh, kind of leading that defense. Um, looks like we got some Zach Terrell at outside linebacker, Griffin Selch, Nolan Lavender. Uh, those guys are kind of battling out for that. Uh, Alex Botkins, and we're going to throw in Ethan Phillips and Josh Burleson uh, at a little bit at, at defense line. Josh also starts, I didn't mention, starts at offensive tackle for us, big sophomore that is going to be really good. And then uh, we got another sophomore, Levi Knox, who's been, been outstanding, works hard. Um, we always tease him. His brothers were really good for us, and he's already attended more workouts than those guys did. <laughs> so uh, Levi's a hard worker, and uh, we really like what we see out of him. Um, so uh, we'll just have to see, and then of course another another young buck will be Tro Troy Gorm will be kind of the mainstay of that as that inside backer. And we got two got some experience on the outside with Noah uh, Davis uh, again, who'll be a two-way guy along with Dallas Fuller. Hopefully, we'll get some help from them. Maybe Tyler Martins will step in and give them some relief need, when they need a, a blow. Uh, Jesse Stewart, another sophomore, do a good job, and then Josh Saru, uh, and along with Quentin Gill, two new guys in at safeties. Uh, Josh Rue, you know, his quarterback for us last year did a tremendous job, but is really learning two new positions and has just been outstanding. And we're, we're thinking we're going to have big things out of him. So we've, uh, I think we've got a good nucleus. we just got to develop the depth. I said it's, it's, we've got it heavy in some places, but not so much in others. You got an opportunity to see the guys in action on Friday night against Columbus East. And uh, before we get to that, and we'll get to it next segment, we'll first clarify and start it all off by the fact that this is a very good Columbus East Bowl club that you uh, battled mm -hmm. on um, a Friday night and coming in, so it's a good test in the scrimmage um, and uh, not necessarily the results that you were looking for coming out of it, but we'll talk about that in the next segment as well. Uh, when we come back here on Inside Artesian Football, we'll take a look at the highlights from the Columbus East matchup. Stop by Krypton Comics off the square in Martinsville and visit the game room to get in on all the action in the latest role-playing and CCG gaming like Pathfinder, Resident Evil, and Magic the Gathering. And be sure to ask Krypton Comics about their gaming club membership. The first month is free, and it's only $5 a month after that. Krypton Comics also carries all your gaming supplies at prices better than you'll find at most big box stores. Krypton Comics also has the latest comic books, as well as the most popular and hard figures. Krypton Comics at 136 East Washington Street, right off the square in Martinsville. Meet Tommy. Tommy's not sure which sport he will play in high school someday. But no matter what he ends up choosing, playing sports in high school will help pave the way to a happier, healthier life. All Tommy needs to do is make up his mind. High School Sports. Pure spirit, pure sport. Pure launching pad for life. Hi, I'm Damon Routenkranz, Mortgage Loan Officer with Home Bank. And I'm Gordy Lucas. This is a great time to buy or build a new home or to refinance your current mortgage. If you're in the market for a home loan, give us a call or stop by one of our offices and find out why, when it comes to mortgage financing, there's no place like home. Home Bank is an FDIC insured equal housing lender. Visit one of our three locations, the main office in downtown Martinsville or one of our branch locations at Grand Valley or 1067 Bridge Street, Mooresville. Welcome back inside Artesian Football with head coach Fred Cutcher. And coach, like we alluded to in the uh, end of the last segment, played a very good Columbus East Ball Club uh, coming in on Friday night in the scrimmage over at Columbus East. I know after the game you weren't necessarily ha happy with some of the effort that the kids uh, put in, and I think the kids uh, responded on Saturday morning with a workout that they had to go through. But uh, you know, it's a good Columbus East team, but can you talk a little bit before we get to the scrimmage, uh, talk a little bit about uh, – what your impressions were maybe going in and then what you thought afterwards, some things that you guys have to work on. Well, I think I always told the kids we want two things. We want to execute, see if we can execute what we're doing offensively and defensively, and I want to see us hit. You know, we've kind of backed them off a little bit. And my biggest thing, my biggest concern is I thought we got out hit on, on Friday night. Uh, we had, they started enjoying it and, 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 and putting some good licks on us, and we didn't respond very well, so that concerned me. Um, you know, it wasn't as, you know, you get home, watch the tape, and you watch it, and you watch it. You know, it wasn't as bad as, as maybe it may have seemed, but uh, bottom line, they scored six times, now four down the goal line. We scored four. I don't know something about the varsity. Uh, but those are, but a lot of those are on big plays. And then uh, you throw in some, some poor tackling, 
And so, yeah, I wasn't very happy. We're a better football team than that. I don't care if it's a scrimmage. I don't care if it's a practice. You've got to get better each night. And, and uh, uh, I thought we were real effective in the, in the first 15 plays, offensively doing some things. And then we got away from that. Some guys started doing their own thing. Uh, quarterback, I didn't think, was putting the ball where he needed to put it. Whether some guys were in his ear, says, you know, throw you, you know, everybody wants it. We want our players to be selfish. But we don't want them to be the point that they, they hurt the team. You know, you want the football, but if your buddy gets the ball, you're just as happy. So uh, I, that's, that's what we preach, you know, be selfish. But, you, you know, if your buddy gets it, you block for him and you get him free. And uh, I thought maybe we had some guys wanting the ball and, and maybe not doing what they're supposed to. So we'll, I, I, this is a good team. Uh, they, got, they got a lot of heart. And uh, they'll, re they'll, they'll pull for each other. So I, well, I think we'll get there. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the uh, scrimmage against Columbus Starting East, you'll see here. East those orange Clyde uniforms from the get-go. Uh, just some little breakdowns there that, you know, we don't have a linebacker closing, and our, our, let's say our line kind of got pushed off. Now they return this quarterback. Quarterback does what he's supposed to. He, uh, he's a, a fiery little guy, but, you know, he throws the ball decently, and he's, his job is to run this inside zone that they run. Uh, running back is very good. I think he's been offered by somebody. I, I don't know, but he's he's pretty good, at, especially with his jump cuts. Um, great play there by Dallas Ford, but Dallas made a his, his athletic ability saved him because he he screwed up about two seconds before that, or he never would have had to make uh, miss that. Trey Deaton, big uh, big catch there. Uh, could be a go-to target. We'll get Trey blocking a little bit, but uh, Trey's got a nice set of hands. Probably catches as well as anybody I've ever had. Um, this is uh, running our jet, uh, Trey Deaton again. Uh, like I said Trey has slimmed down a little bit, so uh, he, Trey's a lot faster than, than, than everybody thinks. He's, he's a lot quicker than he was last year. Uh, this is a screen to John's Lottie. This is what we think John can do for us. Uh, Mason throws a little bit behind him. If Mason gets it out in front of him, probably John's probably going to score on that. So those are little things we've got to get. The quarterback's got to get more accurate, but uh, John did a good job on that. Uh, this is just a great catch by, I believe, Forler uh, that just kind of saved him. I mean, Corler, he's going to do that, but uh, you know, we we work, we we look. That's a timing route. We quite that right time a little bit better than that. But uh, and here's Zach Miranda. You know, just a little guy. I thought our line did a good job getting a good push. That's what happens when you get a good push, and uh, and and so we didn't do that all the time. Good job there, Mason, looking off, and then this was uh, uh, Nellen. This was really a seam route to Dallas. Uh, they're going to be, you know, Mason's got a very strong arm, and we got some quick guys. And um, if we can give him time, you're going to see a lot of that this year, I believe. Another good job by the offensive line, Trey Deaton doing his thing, and Mason. This is where I thought we were really effective. Uh, this first 15 plays, and then as the scrimmage wore on, we that's where either we're not in shape, uh, but we weren't very good on that. Good job. I should, probably should have been a touchdown right there. Uh, if it hits the it hits the pylon, I always thought it was a touchdown, but these refs didn't. But it's a scrimmage, and then I believe Zach Moran is going to take this in, and which uh, is basically an inside zone that we're reading the defensive end. If if he darts, then Mason's going to pull it. Uh, back here on defense, uh, good Bo Trimble getting a getting an interception. Again, this is I think later in the scrimmage, and then we settle down, and start playing some football, and. Uh, uh, guys doing their assignments. It's got to happen. We're not good enough to do our own thing. And, uh, you know, this is the same team that, you know, 20 plays earlier had had uh, four plays scored on it inside the inside the goal line. Uh, Zach Miranda's got uh, – we, we, we're going to do that a lot. We're trying to go five-man protection. Mason's going to look. If it's not open, he's going to kick it down to those – and uh, uh, and they've got to be able to catch it. And we had a couple of drop passes out of those guys. It's a good fake by Mason. Uh, Mason, uh, yeah, Mason, he, he can he can run for a big guy and uh, reads it, and uh, I think they're a little surprised how fast he actually is. But uh, that's a good job. I've, I don't know if their defensive end will be back. Some will say he may have a torn tri uh, bicep, but he's a good uh, good player trying to make the tackle. Um, Josh Rue is another kid you're going to see playing defense for us, but he's going to see a lot of him on offense. We actually we have like for him only catch the ball once. Uh, when you bobble it, that's uh, not good, but uh, that was a great catch, and uh, he caught over the middle. This is Keegan Northern getting in, a big sophomore, uh, doing a good job, and that's uh, Connor Dean, another sophomore that uh, works hard and has to learn his plays. But I thought Keegan came in, and we're giving Keegan a lot of reps. Uh, we don't want anything to happen to our starter, but 
you know we you know you know we're in pretty good shape from that I think but uh, as far as having depth at that position here's our jet play again good job blocking and when you block good things happen again that's Connor Dean Connor Dean forgot his sock so he's got to do a few board pushes but uh, other than that uh, I was really pleased with some of the young guys I thought they had a good effort well, you got an opportunity. You kind of look there at the, uh, some of the highlights. So some of the young kids got in later on in mm -hmm. the scrimmage. A good tune-up, really. It's a very good ball club in Columbus East. So now, really, you put the pads on for real. Coming up on a Friday night against a very good Garing Catholic ball club. The Eagles coming in here to town. We will take a break with the coach, and we will preview that contest. It's the home opener for the Artesians on Friday night. But we'll be back to take a look at it when we return inside. Artesian football. For just 2% of a typical school's budget, high school sports give us plenty of energy and excitement. For just 2%, they also give us young people whose leadership and commitment to excellence will pay big dividends in our community for years to come. 2%, that's one investment we can all feel good about. High school sports, pure spirit, pure sport, pure launching pad for life. Subway and enjoy a five dollar foot long today. It's evening in Indiana and the wait's over. The homework hotline is open. When you get stuck with math or science homework, there's help, and it's free. Call the homework hotline toll-free at 1-877-ASK-ROSE from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Time, Sunday through Thursday. The tutors are friendly Rose Holman Institute of Technology college students who understand your frustration because, well, we've been there. We don't give you the answers, just the help you need to figure out your homework. We even have copies of your math and science textbooks. It's a free service and a free call. Remember 1-877-ASK-ROSE or visit askrose.org. Rose Holman's Homework Hotline, when math and science homework has you stuck. Welcome back everyone to Inside Artesian Football here on WREP 15 Sports, the first show of the 2013 football season as we look ahead to the home opener for the Artesians, the opening game of the season. Coming up on Friday night out of Satterwitz Field as the Artesians will play host to the Garing Catholic Eagles, the uh, second year that the uh, Eagles are on our, our schedule coming here to Siderwitz Field on Friday night, and uh, they will bring a good ball club to town. Uh, very good. Their uh, quarterback is uh, transferred in last year from Fishers, and I believe he's been offered by Northern Illinois, is what I understand. Uh, has a great ball. I mean, strong arm, runs well. Uh, the running back uh, really hurt us last year. He's back. Uh, they lost a lot of linemen, but uh, you know, Catholic schools seem to find those guys pretty easily. So, uh, you know, we're looking for, uh, it's going to be a good game. I mean, it's not, when you're playing a Catholic school, it's not, you know, not, you're not picking on a little 2A school. So it'll be, uh, hopefully we'll have a great crowd. It's going to be a great night. going to be a little hot, but it'll be a great night to come out and watch football. Um, you know, they had a great crowd. We had a good crowd there last year, but they had a great crowd and great atmosphere and saw a great ball game where we had to win it in the, in the, in the end in the last, really in the last, you know, a minute, I believe, something like that. But make a long story short, it's going to be a battle. Let's talk a little bit about their team and what we may see out of them offensively. Obviously, you haven't seen them play in a regular season game yet, so you don't have a lot to go off of. Some of what maybe they did last year, some of the things you see uh, from the scrimmage, from what you can tell thus far, though, what do you expect out of Garen Catholic offensively on Friday night? Well, I think they're, they're going to try to run the football. they got a good running back, and you'll see uh, different formations, but you'll see shotgun with two backs back there and a tight end, and I think they're going to kind of do the, well, what we've seen maybe against Columbus, Columbus East with the zone read. Uh, they were a very good screen team. They killed us with screens last year, so we've been working it, but uh, they, uh, they, you know, they love the screen, very good at it. Uh, their thing is, is they're going to throw the football. You got a quarterback like that, and they've, I'm sure they've got a couple guys who can catch. 
uh, they're going to throw it. So uh, they're going to be a well-balanced team, and uh, it's it's going to be. Uh, you know, hopefully, it's not a scoring fest. We're scoring. Uh, and then on the defensive side of the ball, they're going to they're going to run their what they call three three stack. We we ran that here before, and they're going to stunt and they're going to come from everywhere. And and if I'm playing us, uh, if they think we're going to throw it, I'm going to stunt, try to confuse us. Uh, last year they did that, but we were running the ball so well they had to get out of it because we nailed them in a couple big uh, big plays. So they just kind of step back and then that kind of them and seeing the possibilities that they can do offensively that you talked about. What's it going to be? What's going to be important for your defense to be able to do some keys to be able to respond to what may be a variety of different looks and a variety of different things you may see on Friday night. We have to hit wrap up. You know, and I just thought that was the, the biggest thing. We, we got out hit Friday night. And in Martinsville, usually that's, you know, we usually hit pretty well. That's one of the teams always comment, and, and I didn't think we did that. Second thing is, I'm not going to say that, uh, uh, that you can't take a play off. I don't think we do that. You can't forget what to do on a play. Uh, that's what happens. You know, we have a, a free safety comes flying up, and it comes a pass, and, and the quarterback from Clemens East play actions, and there's a guy running down the field wide open. Well, safety's messed up, but we can't have that. You've got to take care of your job. A lot of times that happens when your eyes are in the wrong place. You know your keys, you stay on them and execute, and those things don't happen. So I would say those are the two major things. And I would tell the kids, we got to move the chains. I'm not worried about a touchdown or this. Just move the chains, put the defense in the bind, and you know we're going to be fine. And you talked a little bit about defensively, obviously moving the chains, what you do offensively. What else do you guys think that you're going to need to be able to do successfully on the offensive side of the things, some keys to being able to come out with a win on Friday? Well, it's, uh, we, we had, I think we put the ball on the ground three times at Friday night. The ball went on the ground. Ball security, you know, those are things that you know, we work every day in practice when we're doing offense. Uh, those are things that are important. Uh, quarterback has to go where they, we, English people won't like this, but have to go where they ain't. Uh, you got to come up there and make the reads. We're going to use the count. You know, we're not going to go on one, and they're going to tip their hand. And when they tip it, we're going to have to check, and then we got the quarterback's got to put us in the right play. And, and Mason's smart enough, and he's done it. It's not a big, you just, you know, you know if you go there, we're going to go the other direction. You know, we're not going to worry about blocking some of that stuff. And with that stack defense, it is, it's a lot of it's confusion. The other thing is we've got to pick up their blitz. And we've worked a lot of blitz package. Uh, so tonight we're going to go out, it's hot, but we're going to do a lot of blitz package and picking that stuff up because uh, we're going to have to be able to throw the football. Uh, and uh, maybe that's going to, you know, last year I thought our running game opened up our, our passing game. You know, this year it may be a little bit different. Uh, we'll see how it goes, but we will, we want to do both. You talked about it uh, when we started the show. It's your seventh season here now. You've been around for uh, quite some time. No offense, but sure. uh, um, as you look at it, do you still get a little bit of first game nerves going in, or is it old school, or how do you feel uh, coming in? Uh, old hat, or you still get a little jittery for that first game, anxious, if you will, to get the season? Oh, you're, you're always jittery. I mean, if you're not, that's when it's the right time to get out, But because you, you don't know – uh, you know, we probably have a we'll have a preseason ranking. Think we've got you know some were ten, some were nine, one were eleven. Uh, don't doesn't mean anything. That's all what happened last year. Uh, we've had a couple all state guys returning, and and they know uh, you know that's all what they did last year. Doesn't mean anything this year. So I think uh, as a coach, and in here at Martinsville, I think we got things rolling in the right direction. I'm, I'm excited about some of the things uh, I'm seeing with the junior highs that we finally got rolling. Uh, I'm I'm excited to see what I'm seeing happening with junior football finally. Uh, doing the things that I think would need to be done to, to, to make this a good football program. Uh, got a little travel team that uh, the big uh, fifth and sixth graders had a big win over a huge and very fast Lawrence Central team uh, last week. And uh, so seeing some good things, I'm, uh, I think hopefully people are excited about Martinsville football. And uh, it's, it's a neat atmosphere. I just want to say I hope people come out. I mean, what a great place to come and hang out for three hours. Uh, if we're throwing it and they're throwing it, it may be four hours. But uh, it's, it's going to be a great night of football. Great night of football coming up on Friday night. It's the home opener, the season opener for the Artesians and the Garen Catholic Eagles. Kickoff set for 7 o'clock and get out there to Siderwitz Field. Should be a great environment as the Artesians welcome the Eagles to town for the first game of the 2013 season. Coach, we appreciate you taking the time to join us as always. Thank you. We'll see you out there on Friday night. Artesian head coach Fred Cutter here on Inside Artesian Football. Martinsville, Garen Catholic coming up. We'll have the replay as always here on WREP. 15 sports for the coach Fred Cutriff along with Carl Van Devender who produced it. I'm Eric Meyer.
We'll see you next week inside Artesian Football.